that uh, overcoat, if you like, and you, uh, you've got another overcoat made of a, another matter system. So the mind isn't left stranded just in the ether alone. It's, it can exist in a whole uh, number of different matter systems, and it can go, it can simply pass from one to the other. So it, we could have a whole range of experiences waiting us. Right. In different matter systems. Yes, I think this. Vibrating at different. That's right. At different speeds. Yes. Which is very much what the mediums say. Uh, and people talk to us through mediums from, the, from other wavelengths and um, say precisely this that um, they have uh, different experiences in worlds which are um, similar in some respects to our own, but unlike it in other respects. And Ron, you were um, quite early on, you, you, you were intrigued when you came across phenomena which you, you had never seen before, oh, um, yes. like healing and psychometry and telepathy. Yes. And that seemed to whet your appetite to look into. I'm not saying that your new physics was based or stimulated by that, but it fascinated you as a, as a scientist. You wanted to know how they worked. And this, this does seem to fit in now to your, to your ether or your, your ether theory, doesn't it? It was really the other way on. The theory which started off with gravitation uh, produced this structured ether as a... Uh, an essential component, and then I had, everybody hears about psychic phenomena and uh, as a, with the scientific training dismisses them automatically because it's nonsense. But then as this theory showed, for instance, that minds could be interconnected through this ether because of this structure. It also showed that a subatomic particle could contain millions of these little tiny um, networks inside itself, even, a t even this tiny pinhead of the electron we were talking about would contain, contain uh, millions of uh, junctions. So it could contain a memory store. All, all neural networks are known uh, to have a memory store and they can, be t they can learn. And so a little tiny object, part of an atom, could contain a memory store. So I thought, well, I heard about psychometry. This seems to explain it. So it was from the theory, the theory was coming out with explanations, which I had automatically dismissed in my earlier life. And I realised then I had to take a closer look at these things, that they could no longer be regarded as ridiculous and be dismissed. Or paranormal? Or I would, supernatural? I would say almost every paranormal, uh, as, every aspect of the paranormal uh, can be explained by physics. Well, so much for the theory. But what about the facts? And how do we establish a fact with regard to survival of death? I spoke to a man who personally witnessed over 1,500 physical materializations. And after speaking to Tom Harrison, I found myself very convinced that his experiences were valid. Uh, Tom, I understand that you've seen something like 1,500 people which we can say have returned from the dead. That's correct. That's right, Alan. Yes, over the years. Yeah. Period of, what, about eight years? Yeah. And, uh, and uh, these uh, people, are they're actually physical, physical beings. They're actual physical beings. People, solid. Me. solid people. Quite solid people, yeah. materialised with ectoplasm or cryptoplasm or teleplasm, different names, but it is a solid material mm. uh, and they built there and walked out and stood in the middle of the room talking to us, walking round, shaking hands with us. Mm. We used to go up and embrace them and people who we knew, as you would if you met a friend in the room, kiss them and everybody saw them and everybody shook hands with them. That's an amazing uh, claim, Tom. Would, would you describe yourself as a, as a spiritualist? I was brought up in a spiritualist family, um, but this phenomena which we're talking about uh, is really not specially linked to spiritualism. It has become linked to spiritualism from years ago, historically, I think, but it isn't anything to do with spiritualism per se. Um, spiritualism, in effect, is that we live as individuals 
when we move into the spirit world, which is true. But this phenomena that we get, and meeting these people, we've had guests who are not spiritualists, ordinary people, as I call them, non-spiritualists, who have met these people, talked to them, seen them, heard them. Yes. So you, you have absolutely no doubt whatsoever that there's a life after death? None whatsoever. Mm. And you're, <laughs> no, you're, no. You're, 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 you... That must have been a, an incredible experience for you. To, Tremendous. And to have that knowledge inside of you now must be an extraordinary thing. Well, it makes me what I am, I suppose. It's made me the person I am, knowing that from, well, 1946 to 1954, 55, that period of time, to every week, practically, apart from when my mother was in hospital, but every week, to be there to meet four or five people, mm -hmm. uh, different people, Sometimes the same Aunt Ag would come, that's my mother's sister who was in spirit. Um, yes, it, it meant that I knew, without any doubt, mm. that we lived on, mm. that we do live on as individuals, and we can return, in inverted commas. We don't bring people back, they want to come and talk to us. It's very much a two-way affair, Alan, mm. this business of communication. It isn't that we necessarily want to speak to them more than they want to speak to us. No, no. They want to speak to us. They, particularly those whose relatives, probably knew nothing about it. And these, and these materialised figures, forms, people... Yes. ..that you knew... Oh, yes. Um, ..would talk to you as I'm talking to you now? Absolutely the same. Exactly the same. Mm. No difference at all. Mm. They, they wanted to come and talk to us. Um, I'm intrigued by, there's one picture in here which uh, I believe is of your, of your grandfather. Yes. <laughs> and you were telling me that although you've never actually met him. Correct. Or that you, you had met him but you didn't remember him because you were too young. Right. That he actually materialised one day for you. Yeah. And invited you to stroke his beard. That's right. Yes, he, he built a few times, actually, um, Grandad did. That was my mother's father, and I, as you rightly said, uh, I didn't know him as such, because my mother was living with her parents when I was born, at the end of First World War, and he used to nurse me, but he died when I was about ten months old, I gather. Um, and when he built, and I went over to meet him, shook his hand, uh, and was delighted to meet my own grandfather, who... I'm talking of, you know, 30 years nearly. I was, what, then 27, 28, yes. And he leaned forward and said to me, feel my beard, my boy, mm. feel my beard, mm. and put his hand up like that. Mm. And I went up and just felt his beard. Mm. Now, this is all ectoplasm. Mm. The whole... But it felt like hair, and it felt like a beard. This was just like a beard. Mm. And as I have always said, I give it a tug just to make sure it wasn't stuck on. <laughs> no, no, it was just part of him. And my mother always said that he was very proud of his beard. He used to wash it regularly, comb it, trim it, and he was very proud. And that was typical of him to say, feel my beard, my boy. Feel my beard. Tom, in your conversations with your, let's call them your, your spirit friends, yes. um, do they ever indicate that there is progress beyond the level that they that they are now yes yes oh yes very yes and ag particularly used to talk to us about these things um and as i said before i think she was a medium when she lived here on the earth a trance medium and a trumpet medium and she has told us that in at her level now which is she said one step ahead of us um she still makes contact as a medium with spirit people who have progressed to another stage. Um, because it is entirely up to the individual if they wish to stay close to the earth plane or if they wish to progress uh, in the spirit world. The majority of people who want to stay close to the earth plane are those who have family here still. I mean, a mother who dies and leaves her children.